We're here in Killinairn, a wonderful area of the country. We supply oysters and shellfish around the country, but also around the world. We're impacted a lot here by salinity. In particular, the last number of years, a lot of drainage work carried on, which has changed the character of the water, which has put the uh, shellfish under pressure and it's hard for it to survive. We've noticed uh, over the last few years huge impacts from storm damage and tidal surges. In particular, last year with Storm Debbie, uh, we had a two metre surge here in this area, which knocked the walls around the area, around the farmland, did huge damage in Kinvara to the shops and the communities there. And it has instilled a fear as to the power of the ocean. It makes you realize how small you are in the scheme of things when a two meter surge of water comes at you in the middle of the night and you have no place to go when you just get out of the way. Boom. Una ola que vino y yo lo arrasó todo. Hay años, muchos barcos, y aquí encima había barcas, pescadores, eso. Después varios días sin poder salir al mar. Es el trabajo suyo, es la comida suya. Cuando has crecido uh, delante del mar, eh, es una necesidad que las islas viven del turismo. Nuestra principal foto en las portadas es la playa. Nosotros consideramos nuestro primer activo como recurso natural y como recurso económico. Para nosotros es primordial tener la playa en condiciones. Desde hace muchos años tenemos una pérdida constante de arena y nos preocupa, nos preocupa porque el cambio climático hace que estamos viendo que está variando nuestra morfología de playa. We zitten eigenlijk met een kwetsbare situatie hier langs onze Vlaamse kust. We zitten met een zandige kust, geen harde rotskusten. Uh, we zitten ook met een hoog getij met veel stormen die op ons afkomen. Dus om de paar jaar doen we een veiligheidszoeking om te checken van ja, is onze ganse kust nog veilig. En dan nemen we ook maatregelen om die zwakke plekken te gaan wegwerken. Daarvoor hebben we ons masterplan kustveiligheid. Dat is een allesoverkoepelend plan die eigenlijk een pakket maatregelen omvat om onze kust te beschermen. Nu is het zo dat we ook in de toekomst kijken. Uh, een masterplan rekent met een bescheiden zeespiegelstijging. Maar in de toekomst na 2050 ja, voorspellen ze grotere zeespiegelstijgingen. Gaande van 1 meter, maar ook plus 2 en plus 3 meter zijn mogelijk. Vandaar dat we ook plannen moeten leggen hebben om onze kust veilig te houden, ook in de verdere toekomst. Our ocean will be determinant in many of the things that happen in the choices that we have ahead on where we live and how our economy moves, our ecosystems, our energy, and how we deal with some of the risks that come from the climate change that we can have to adapt to in the future. So our understanding of the ocean is central to our understanding of our own prospects as a society and as an economy. And to understand the ocean, we need new infrastructure, a new intelligence, new ways of understanding the dynamics in the ocean so that real people in real places in Europe and elsewhere can make real decisions that will affect their lives, their economies and their futures. And that's where the digital twin of the oceans comes in. The European digital twin of the ocean will be a digital replica of the real world ocean and therefore it will be able to reproduce any natural hazards or disasters that occurred in the past but also those that might occur in the near future and because it's a digital environment it's actually a safe environment for stakeholders and policy makers to not only evaluate these possible scenarios but also evaluate possible mitigation and adaptation measures. Our work uh, is uh, very much related to the safety of the coast. Here at the Living Lab Riverside, where we uh, built the artificial dike, we do a lot of physical modeling, but we didn't work with digital twins before, and we see that as a big opportunity to understand more about the coast. At the moment, we do a lot of studies. I mean, not only us, or the morphological point of view, but also people studying ecology, biology, or socio-economical aspects, and all this work has to be integrated in order to see the whole image. The idea here is indeed to bring the fragmented pieces into one place, into a new shape and form so that it can be accessible, available, readily usable for everybody. 
We need uh, something that is unique, that is a game changer. A digital will be transformative. It will allow users to log into one place to access data at high speed and run their numerical or machine learning models on those data sets. The data is being stored in a data lake in one processing center. And as far as we understand, it will be the only marine data lake of its type in the world. Edito will play a key role in uh, develop all the uh, operational oceanography services because they will provide a fast and easy access to the information. Edito is an infrastructure project. It is a collaboration between eModnet and Copernicus Marine. The goal of the Edito project is to build high-speed data access system that can be used by people who are building digital twins and who want to access eModnet and Copernicus marine data. It has to be based on the best science and Copernicus is connecting the space and satellite technology to ocean modeling, prediction, operations of uh, forecast and real analysis. It will enable high-performance computing to be coupled with um, the latest state-of-the-art data and modeling facilities. But the foundation of this is data. And what eModnet offers is the most comprehensive in-situ service in Europe. We're using new high-speed cloud technologies to transform how people use our data products to develop new insights in the marine space. It's a platform that invites you to share and contribute. It's a scalable infrastructure that will grow or shrink based on demand to ensure that users, their needs are constantly met. He or she would be able to build his own digital twin of the ocean, nest it on the European one, and add coastal processes that are relevant for this particular location. It will really allow coastal communities to become more resilient against sea level rise and possible extreme events. Coastal communities, they provide us the real needs of the digital twin application, since they are the ones that are living, the ones that are working, and the ones that face these effects of climate change. The local communities are a key component in, in the development of models because no one knows the local characteristics of a region as the local communities know. So we find working with the Marine Institute uh, very beneficial, not just for the oyster restoration, but also for information that these models can provide. For example, last year we had the marine heat wave. The shellfish get stressed out, particularly if the temperature goes up four or five degrees, which was a real abnormality last year. But with the new technology that can be predicted at least a few days in advance, and it gives you some chance to protect your stock. I think the models like the one we developed for Galway Bay are crucial for the development of a fit for purpose DTO, as these models are capable of accurately representing ecosystem dynamics. Uh, they can predict impacts of climate change in the bay. The future DTO can play a significant role in enhancing the services we provide to our local stakeholders. Een digital twin zou natuurlijk ja, een perfect tool zijn om heel snel te kunnen monitoren en evalueren hoe het staat met onze kust. Dan kunnen we eigenlijk veel korter op de bal gaan spelen en efficiënter ook gaan omgaan met de overheidsmiddelen. And the co-design of digital twin applications is the basis of the digital twin concept. Digital twins is not a matter of just data, it's not a matter of just models. It's also a matter of society and also it's a matter of economy. Digital Twin Ocean will allow us to make the decisions where to best place the marine renewable energy, where to establish marine protected area, how to ensure clean water for coastal tourism, how to develop the new type of blue economy. It's designed to be open, it's designed to be co-creation, it's designed to bring people in, and fundamentally it's designed to be a tool for people to make decisions about their futures. The Edito platform will be an enabler for scientists who are looking for insights on the challenges to the marine environment. And in time, they will take it for granted as just another tool in their toolbox. Thanks to Edito, the European Digital Twin of the Ocean will now become a tangible reality. The question I have to ask the ocean is, uh, when are you going to cool down? What can we do for you? What's happening underneath? How is my health connected to your health? Is the Gulf Stream failing? How can we help you? We ask you some more patience, because in the future we're going to work and live together much better than before.